So in this clip we'll talk about uh, different systems of uh, international um, international economic arrangements. Uh, specifically, um, we will uh, think a bit about uh, the open economy trilemma. So I uh, prepared this little diagram here, uh, which helps to illustrate the dilemma. So first of all, let's note that uh, any economy principally would like to have exchange rate stability so that there are not violent fluctuations in the value of its currency vis-a-vis -vis other currencies. Uh, any economy would like to benefit from free capital movements, meaning that uh, residents of the country can uh, invest in other countries and that uh, uh, in turn residents of other countries can bring its capital into uh, the home country and uh, open a factory there or buy stock in a company and such. So principally it is uh, seen to be desirable uh, to have free capital movement. Uh, and third, uh, it is usually considered to uh, be beneficial for the country to have monetary policy autonomy by which we mean that uh, the monetary authorities can uh, use the monetary policy instrument, the principal monetary instrument, the interest rate to target domestic economic activity, meaning uh, stabilize the business cycle in the recession, reduce interest rates, and uh, at the peak of the business cycle, increase interest rates to, uh, to control inflation. So we have these three goals. Now the trilemma means that uh, we can usually uh, choose only two of them. So uh, in the extreme uh, you have to sacrifice one of these goals in order to achieve the other, th uh, the other two. How does this work out here? So for example if we choose to focus on exchange rate stability and open capital accounts then we can achieve that uh, by having a fixed exchange rate uh, but we must sacrifice monetary policy autonomy. In fact, the fixed exchange rate system with open capital account implies that the monetary policy, the tool, the interest rate as the principal tool of monetary policy is used to uh, fix the exchange rate. So that's one example. Uh, let me clean this up here. As a second example, uh, assume that we want exchange rate stability and monetary, monetary policy autonomy. Then we must have capital controls and give up the second goal of having free capital movements uh, so that we can use the domestic lead interest rate to target economic activity and fix the exchange rate but we do not let uh, capital flow in and out of the country. And third, um, we can emphasize monetary policy autonomy and open capital accounts, but then we might have to sacrifice the goal of exchange rate stability, so we must have a floating exchange rate. So in this manner, you can see that we can choose always two out of these three. Now in practice, this is not uh, necessarily uh, always such a hard choice in real life uh, specifically because we do not only have the interest rate as a monetary policy tool uh, you countries can use other tools such as regulations and uh, uh, reserve requirements and such uh, to uh, try to target domestic activity uh, and use the interest rate to target exchange rate stability with an open capital account but uh, let's abstract for now from such complications and stick with this uh, abstraction um, that the trilemma holds in its extreme. So in this in this clip now, uh, having laid out the trilemma, um, I want to focus on two things. The first is that we're going to talk about uh, the post-World War II uh, history, the dec uh, decades often called the golden age of capitalism or uh, labeled as well the Bretton Woods system since uh, exchange rates were largely fix fixed. We had so uh, among 
all the key countries who had a largely exchange rate stability and we had an increasingly we had increasingly open capital accounts so that uh, um, through the emergence of the euro dollar markets and such uh, capital movements became freer and freer throughout uh, the 60s and into the 70s so we see then here that uh, monetary policy autonomy had to be given up so that's we'll talk about that, and then uh, we'll talk about what the system looks like since the 70s, when the uh, world moved largely from uh, fixed exchange rates between key currencies to a system of floating exchange rates, so that the countries would have monetary policy autonomy together with open capital accounts, but would have to give up exchange rate stability, and we'll review the principal arguments for that. So with this brief classification, let's move on to a new page and begin with uh, that uh, Bretton Woods system. I want to label that Bretton Woods. So the US uh, serves as the center, car, uh, center country um, the US currency is fixed vis-a-vis -vis gold and all other currencies are fixed vis-a-vis -vis the dollar so that uh, we have a system of fixed exchange rates let me just illustrate that here with this triangle and the focus here on this edge fixed exchange rate with a increasingly open capital accounts and exchange rate stability so uh, to analyze this situation, we'll develop a simple model, a model to describe uh, internal and external balance. First, we have a curve here for internal balance, which we'll label II. Uh, internal balance here means that any point along this curve describes the situation of full employment and price stability within the country. Now, why is this curve downward sloping? Why do we have this slope? So, um, why do we have this, uh, why do we have this uh, negative slope uh, for internal balance? Let's think about that. Uh, this curve shows all the combinations of exchange rates and income that uh, correspond to a situation of full employment and price stability. <clears throat> so we need a lower exchange rate, so a more depreciated exchange rate, to be offset by uh, higher domestic spending to be at full employment. Because a lower exchange rate implies a lower current account, which would imply lower income, so we need higher domestic spending. So we have an, uh, a negative slope between these two. Now, we have a second curve, which we'll label XX, which describes external balance. Uh, and this one is upward sloping. Why is this curve upward sloping? So uh, for that to Let's write it down here. We have external balance. Remember that the current account is a function of income and the exchange rate, the real exchange rate, but uh, principally, um, <coughs> I'll, <coughs> I'll proxy that by writing down the level of the normal exchange rate here. So the current account is a negative function of the level of income and a positive function of the exchange rate so the higher income, the higher are imports, and the lower will be the current account, but the higher the exchange rate, meaning the more depreciated the exchange rate, the higher are uh, exports, and the larger will be the current account, the, the larger will be the current account surplus. So if X, if X is a target level of the, um, the current account that the authorities would like to achieve, then, uh, would like to achieve for external balance, 
then a higher exchange rate leading to higher exports must be offset by higher domestic spending uh, so that imports increase in order to maintain uh, the current count at this level. So in this manner we have uh, we have these four zones here uh, that is here two three and four so internal balance above and to the right of the internal balance uh, curve spending is too high so we have in a sense overemployment booming domestic conditions uh, below it we have underemployment, so we have domestic unemployment. Now, for the external balance equation, uh, to the right of it, uh, we have a situation of uh, current account deficits. So, C for the current account here, since at this at this at a given exchange rate for this higher level of income the current account will be negative, whereas above here we have a situation of a current account surplus. And this is what uh, can be called uh, zones of discomfort, and uh, if we are anywhere out of this equilibrium, the authorities will have to try to rectify the situation. Uh, so, let me make some space here and then show the principal, principal issue that arises in a system of fixed exchange rates. Suppose that, well this here is a Y star, the equilibrium, suppose that we are right here. How do we uh, regain internal and external balance? So in this situation we have unemployment and uh, current account deficit. How do we regain internal and external balance. Suppose that uh, we use fiscal policy and contract the economy so we might get back to external balance through a reduction in, in, in imports but then we're still not in internal balance, we have large unemployment. Suppose on the other hand we use a fiscal expansion and we create uh, output and employment domestically but we have a large current account deficit so we have internal balance but we're far out of external balance. Simple conclusion is that we need to not only change expenditure levels uh, expenditure changing policies but we need as well uh, expenditure switching policies. So we would need a rise in the exchange rate, a devaluation, and that is what we'll call expenditure switching policies in order to maintain uh, both internal and external balance. So this devaluation here, why is that so problematic? Well, in a system of fixed exchange rates, such devaluations, uh, just hold, uh, I'm just recording, hold on a second. So uh, in a system of fixed exchange rates, such devaluations are not supposed to happen. And in fact, the very threat of this devaluation carries the seeds of the possibilities of balance of payments crises and, uh, and the associated mayhem. So with recurring balance of payments crises and uh, the uh, devaluations and uh, associated disruptive effects, uh, people started thinking about uh, how to uh, how to come up with a better system and then we're getting to uh, in throughout the course of the 70s when the Bretton Woods system breaks down to a system of floating exchange rates meaning in our uh, classification of the uh, trilemma we're moving to this situation here open capital accounts and monetary policy autonomy but more exchange rate volatility 
So one of the advantages seen here, principally we have, okay, we have monetary policy autonomy to target domestic activity. Uh, then uh, the desire was as well to remove the issues related to the U.S. serving as the key currency. Now the question here, uh, the question is open whether that uh, successfully happened. Uh, so uh, given recent events uh, and the large crisis in since 2008 in global financial markets uh, leads us to put a large question, put, put a question mark on that. But uh, third, um, the uh, floating exchange rate can act as a automatic stabilizer. And that is what I would like to focus on uh, for, for this, for, for the moment. So how does a floating exchange rate act as a stabilizer? Let me make some space here. And we're going back to uh, to our well-known diagram of the AADD model. So we have E and Y, and we have an asset market equilibrium in foreign exchange and domestic financial markets, and we have goods market equilibrium in DD. Now, uh, suppose that we have a uh, adverse demand shock so that uh, foreign countries buy less of our products and we get to this situation. Now under a system of fixed exchange rates when the government wants to maintain this E-bar uh, the strength of uh, fiscal policy in fact uh, is as well its weakness since an adverse demand shock uh, has to be accommodated by the financial authorities uh, and the output effect is not only this but in fact uh, multiplied through maintaining the exchange rate. It, in a system of flexible exchange rates it would be buffered by this depreciation. So if the authorities let the exchange rate depreciate, we would gain to we would get to the blue point, whereas uh, fixed exchange rates would force us to target the the red point. So in that sense, uh, a floating exchange rate through the export channel acts as an automatic stabilizer. But ultimately, uh, the uh, questions of the right international economic arrangements and the right international financial architecture are uh, up for debate and uh, not, uh, not answered uh, given uh, the recurring crisis uh, it is not clear uh, which system, a fixed exchange rate system or a floating exchange rate system uh, has uh, the clearest benefits for any individual country.